TorahCafe.com. Today, I'd like to share with you a little the mitzvah of, uh, which is the first mitzvah we do when we start in the morning, which is the mitzvah of Netilat Yadayim. One of my favorite mitzvot. It might seem at first glance a very, very simple act that we do in the morning, which is basically to take a cup and hold it with our right hand, fill it up, give it to our left hand, wash our right, then our left, then our right, then our left, then our right, then our left. And then we say, after drying our hands, of course, we do a first Nechilat Yadayim in the morning while waking up. We prepare ourselves, and when we're ready to actually stay, say the morning blessings, we're going to be washing our hands again, and then drying them, and then we say, Al Nechilat Yadayim, and we lift up our hands like this towards uh, uh, the place where our eyes are. So, why do we do this mitzvah? And what is the deeper meaning of this mitzvah that... It takes a place right at the beginning, the onset of our day. Imagine the way you start your day, if you ask any businessman, the way you start your day is really has an impact on the rest of your day. Actually, the Mitle Rebbe writes in Pokeach Ivrim that the first thought we have in the day actually has an impact on the whole day. But that's for another discussion. So what is this mitzvah? Why do we do Nechidat Yadayim? Anybody knows? Why do we wash our hands in the morning? What are the, there's four, four reasons at least mentioned. Because when you go to sleep, what happens is the neshama elevates itself, comes back. We, sleep is compared to a 60th of death. And therefore, what happens is that the impurity of death is on the tip of your fingers and you have to wash it off. That's going to be the first reason. Is there another reason why we wash our hands at night? Correct. Yadayim askaniyot hena. The Shulchan Aruch Court of Jewish Law says that the hands are busy and they're always touching different parts of the body. You can come in, please. You're always touching other parts of the body. And therefore, you have to wash your hands. Another reason that's given why we wash, to have to wash, to our, hands, uh, wash our hands because it says, Ikon likrat elokecha Israel. You have to prepare yourself to meet your God. And just like in the temple, they had to sanctify their hands, so too we sanctify our hands in the morning. Now, let's explain this at a li little deeper level. What is this whole ceremony? I start with the right, I give it to the left, the left gives it to the right, the right gives it to the left. What are we trying to accomplish? What are the hands? What does it mean, netilat yadayim? Anybody can translate the word al netilat yadayim? What? To raise your hands, exactly. The word netilat yadayim does not mean to wash your hands, because if not, when you shake the lulav and you say al netilat lulav, you would wash the lulav. <laughs> so obviously, if you're lifting the lulav, it means you're lifting your hands. This for me, the, the mitzvah of netilat yadayim, when we look at it through the eyes and through the perception of chasidut, we realize that it's an exercise, which is a very deep exercise to put you in a mode of mind over matter. I don't mind and you don't matter. So, just joking. So, what happens is that this uh, exercise is tremendous. Let's explain. Why do we wash our hands three times? Anybody knows why three times? Why do we wash it with water? Why not with something else? So, Kabbalah explains that in general, the Moach, Chabad, Chokhmah, wisdom, Bina, understanding, Da'at, focus and intention, are the three brains. What happens is that the koach, in general, these three brains could be called chokhmah, wisdom. Chokhmah is compared to water. Chokhmah, if you look at the word chokhmah in Hebrew, and it's mentioned in the Tikkun Zohar, the word chokhmah is a division of two words, as the Tanya mentions. Koach, the power of ma, of what is. What is it? I'm just at a loss when I, for example, when you have an idea, you're creative, you've been researching a solution to a problem, to a difficulty, and suddenly, boom, just like lightning, it pops into your head. And then you say, ma, and you stay like dumbfound by, by this incredible revelation, which only lasts for a certain minute or so, or a split second, and then goes away. Water 
has a little the same qualities as Chokhmah. Wisdom is something that comes from a higher source to us, to a lower source. Water comes from a higher source to a lower source. Water, just like wisdom, is at its purest level. It does not have a smell, it does not have an order, it does not have a shape, and it doesn't have a color. So it's the purest state of, uh, that can be in a physical way. And therefore, water is just compared to wisdom. Water and wisdom are the same thing. That's why the Torah is called, uh, is called Chokhmah. Now, it's, it's compared to water. Now, question here. Yes. Can it be any sort of water? It has to be water which is unused. You, you mean for artesian water? I'm just joking. So, uh, artesian water, that's what you're asking? Now, any type of water, it has to be water which is pure, which, means has, which has not been used. Which means if you took water from the ocean, yes, you could do that. But if it was used for use already, for example, to wash your face, and this is the water that's left out, for example, you're not allowed to do that. You can, it has to be pure water. Now, in, the, in our, our sages teach us in Kabbalah, in the Zohar, something beautiful about Chokhmah, the quality of this wisdom. It says, Ha-chokhmah, King Solomon says, Ha-chokhmah te et ba'aleha. Wisdom makes a person live. What does it mean it makes a person live? Very simple. When you're not creative, you can do things that's going to be robotic. The moment you have wisdom, it's going to make you live because you have intention in your life. You have creativity. Besides that, it says, Yamutu velo bechokhmah. They will die, but not in wisdom. Meaning, when a person is wise, he is alive. Now, Chokhmah in Kabbalah in the Zohar is called Kodesh, Kadosh, holy. Why? Because it's aloof. You know, uh, if you look at the two triangles of the Magen David, you will see the way we are built. The, the Magen David has a triangle that goes up and inwards. And it, there's another triangle that goes down and outwards. What is the difference? This is the difference that exists between intellect and between midot, feelings, emotions. Emotions cannot be shared by a person by himself. He needs an individual outside to be able to express his emotions. On the other hand, knowledge is something which is uh, something you can acquire by yourself. Today you can lock yourself up. There is a little disc called Otsar HaChokhmah, 42,000 books. You lock yourself up and you can become the greatest, wisest person that can be. But you emotionally, you can't do that. That's why one triangle goes up. Chokhmah is called Kodesh, holy. It's interesting because what happens when we sleep? When we sleep, there's a lack of consciousness. And therefore, there's a lack of consciousness. It's the opposite of life. What is the opposite of life? Death. How is death called in Hebrew? Besides the word met, in Parashat Chukat, we have the expression of a halal, somebody which is halal. He is dead, he's been killed, he's a halal. The word halal, when I say the word halal, what does it remind you of? Chilul Hashem, a desecration of God's name. Chilul Hashem, Chilul, there's another expression, Khalil. Does anybody know what a Khalil is? A flute. What is the common denominator of a flute, a dead person, and a desecration of God's name. They're all empty. They're void of something. A flute is void of space, and therefore it's a flute. Chilul, a halal, a dead person is, is void of life. And a chilul Hashem is a desecration of God's name. It's void of God's presence. Therefore, the word halal is empty. Empty of consciousness, and therefore, when I go to sleep, there is a tum'ah, there's an impurity. I'm closed up. I have to wake up the consciousness again. And that's why we use water, which is called, which is compared to wisdom, to chokhmah, because of its purity, in order to liven us up, in order to bring us to life in the morning. That's what wisdom is. Now, what we want to accomplish, really, is that that wisdom that we have and that knowledge and understanding should be able to dominate the emotions. We get very confused. We get very uptight. 
Anybody that has the bad custom of going to sleep watching the news wakes up very nervous. Stop watching the news. At least diminish it. Don't do it before you go to sleep. So like this you can wake up like another person. The first thing you want to do is to be able to control your emotions. We are, Baruch Hashem, very active, but at the same time, there's a lot of stressful things happening. How do you control your emotions? So God gives us an exercise which is extraordinary, a mitzvah called netilat yadayim. Lift up your hands. How do we do this mitzvah? In the Patach Eliyahu, in the Akdama, in the introduction to the Tikkun Zohar, it talks about how we are made of God's image. Hesed de Ro'a The right hand is represented, represents kindness. Smola, uh, uh, de roa smola. The left hand represents severity, concealment. Tiferet gufa. The power of synergy is the torso that brings both together. Avraham is the right hand. Itzchak is the left hand. Jacob, Bene Israel, the children of Israel, is the torso, is the one that's the synergy of both with each, one, each quality. That could be a lecture for six hours just talking about the differences and how to, we get there. Now, let's explain this. Our sages teach us in the Talmud of Psachim, page 117, Ishmael. Not like Avraham, that Ishmael came out of him. Not like Yitzchak, that... Uh, uh, Esav came out of him. Yaakov had 12 perfect children. What happens? What is the Talmud teaching us? So Hasidut explains, very simple. When you're at one extreme, you're off balance. If you're going to be an extremist in your kindness, you're going to automatically have what's called Yenikat Hachisonim. Yenikat Hachitsonim in Hebrew means that the negative powers will take off something. Any extreme is no good, Maimonides says. You have to go in the path which is the golden path, which is equally distant from one end to the other, exactly in the center. Sometimes you have to go to the extreme, Maimonides says. For example, you have to be extremely humble or go extremely away from anger. But... Avraham was an extremist when it came to love. All you need is love, he said. And later on, Jonathan uh, uh, Lennon took it over and said, you know what, uh, I'm going to make a song out of it, right? So Avraham Avinu goes to the extreme and he gives birth to something which is going to be negative. There's the positive of the, of the chesed and then there's the negative. You go to the other extreme, there's the positive of being completely given over uh, to, to, to God and be ready to sacrifice yourself, but then there's the extreme of Esav. And then you have Yaakov. Yaakov is the center, is the balance, is the healthy focus that is um, the way we're supposed to be. So what do we need to do in order to balance out our emotions? We want to be able to bring mind over matter. The mind itself is... You know what it says? The, it says in the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Yagia kapecha kitochel ashrecha vetovlach. Your hands will work. You are happy and it's going to be good. You're happy in this world and it'll be good for you in the world to come. What does it mean your hand will work? Many times our mind is involved in so much in the physicality that we get caught up in it. And we get caught up in all these things. Why was Moses a shepherd? Why was King David a shepherd? Why were Avraham, Yitzhak, Yaakov, all the 12 tribes shepherds? Why? The leaders. They could have been CEO of a big company. What, they didn't have to be a shepherd. What type of a job is that? The answer is that they wanted to be able to have a work where their hands are involved, but the mind is free to think about the greatness of God and to be able to bond and connect to God. And that's why, according to some commentaries, when Moses saw the burning bush, this burning bush was burning for a while already. The only thing is, everybody was busy carpooling, they were investing, right? How many camels? The camel stock went up, and then this stock went down, and so on and so forth. Everybody was busy. So they didn't have time to notice the extraordinary phenomenon that was happening before their eyes. Moshe Rabbeinu asura ve'ere'et amare'agadol. Because he was a thinker, 
he was able to step back and actually look at the phenomenon and actually appreciate, internalize it, transform it into his life. What happens then? God speaks to him. You want God to speak to you? Take time. The enemy of man is time. We don't put our mind, we don't have no mindfulness in what we do. We're so busy trying to be human doers instead of human beings. Which the whole Chabad is what is all, Chasidut Chabad is what is all about mind over matter. You have to be able to control your emotions. Sometimes in the middle of the day, we're going to get a phone call and we're going to get upset and that's going to catch us and it's going to, to irritate us. How do you control this? How do you uh, overcome the emotion? Not to go to one extreme or the other. You have to have an anchor. The anchor is the way you start your day. How do we start our day? We do, after modernity, we do Nechilat Yadayim. After preparing ourselves, as we explained before, we do Nechilat Yadayim. We want to be able to internalize things. We want to become thinkers. If we become thinkers, if we start using our minds in a much more mindful way, even if it's a few minutes a day, we are able to affect our day and become a master of our day. Of course, the, the ultimate master and the only master is God. But we want to be able to connect to that reality. There's a, my rabbi, Alev Shalom, Rev Moshe Rubin, was a great Hasid, a very, very special Hasid. I'm from Montreal originally. And uh, before I came close to Chabad, I was about 15 years old. I, um, I went to the yeshiva and I saw a Hasid pray. How did he pray? I saw a man for an hour and a half, two hours praying and just saying the words and saying them over again. The Rebbe once gave him two dollars for saying the words twice because whenever he would not uh, say it with the right intention the first time, he would repeat it again in order to make the experience a special experience. We want to create a relationship. In a relationship, there's two people. There's two people. Now, what does it mean, two people? It means that I have to be there and I have to be able to relate to you. In order for me to relate to you, I have to be at peace with myself. And then when I'm at peace with myself, I'm wholesome myself, I can continue to connect to you in a wholesome way. When and I'm all over the place, that is not possible. How do you accomplish that? We accomplish that through what's called in Hasidut, Hidboninut meditation. Now, meditation, I'm not talking about the transcendental meditation. I'm talking about the simple exercise of taking the time of a subject matter that you have studied, for example, with your rabbi, and let's say it's a chapter of Tanya, chapter 41, for example, or 42, which explain the greatness of Hashem in a way which is very uh, to our reach, where it's reachable and it's, it's something that we can connect to. You take that chapter and you take the time to calm down your mind and say, I'm going to start my day thinking about this, reviewing this in my mind. And slowly but surely, you will see how your mind has a capacity to focus and focus again and focus again. I, I know I have a friend uh, where we study on Skype in the morning, sometimes very early or on the phone. And after we studied, we give it ourselves a challenge. I call it the one-minute challenge. What's the one-minute challenge? After we reviewed our studies and we know what we're talking about thoroughly, we say to each other, we're going to try to meditate on this eight times during the day. We never get to eight times, maybe to four or five times. And as soon as I meditate on that point, I'm going to send you a little uh, message, a little uh, uh, text message saying, okay, I did it. Okay, so you did it, I did it. I must say that the days that I do that and you actually take Hasidut and internalize it, internal, it's a completely different day because you've trained your mind to stop and to review something. One minute. You do it one minute. You think it's difficult? It's not difficult. You think it's easy? It's not easy. But it takes discipline and it takes a good partner in learning to be able to really internalize things. Prayer is another type of prayer when you know who you're standing in front of and who you are. You are a creation in front of your creator, right? Your creator is real. He is emet. Emet, he's the ultimate level of truth. And he's infinite. You are limited. Once you have that rapport, 
I advise you, for example, in your prayer, if you understand a little what you're saying, to concentrate on the end of the words. The end of the words in prayer make a complete difference in prayer. The end of the words, for example, in Hebrew you say, Baruch Atah, you. Elokeinu, our God. Um, I will elevate you. Please give us, grant us. So it's us, it's you, it's us, it's you, it's ah. Oh, there's a relationship here. It's not like two individuals living in the same house, not talking to each other or just talking small talk. It's people that are actually looking, connecting in the eyes and saying, hi, my name is this, I'm connecting to you. Then prayer is another experience. That's why the Tanya says that the prayer is actually your anchor for the rest of the day. Which means when you have a test, a challenge during the day with your emotions, you have a point of reference which is to look back and say, wow, this morning I had an experience with God. Because I have that experience, I remember that experience, I'm not going to let myself go. Just like our sages teach us, as a, 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 Misha en lo bait, en lo adam. a person that doesn't have a house doesn't, is not a man. What does that mean? Our sages explain, a person that's not married, he's not a man, he's not complete. What does that mean? It means that if I have a wife at home, when I'm outside, I'm able to overcome the challenges because I know I have my wife at home, right? What was yesterday a, um, uh, enticing me as a Yetzirah, as an evil inclination, became now a protection. I have a home, I have an anchor. The anchor of a Jew in the morning is prayer. Let's go back to Netilat Yadayim, which is the first thing. I'm going to give you an exercise and a little meditation to do every morning, and I guarantee you it will change your life. Do it for 30 days, money back guarantee. I'm not <laughs> paying back for the water that you use to wash your hands. <laughs> now, so far, just to go back, we've explained that we have water. We use water to do Netilat Yadayim. We take the cup in our right hand, give it to our left. Our left gives it to the right and, and so on and so forth. We do this movement six times, three times on each hand. And we said that water is compared to chokhmah, to wisdom, which is the creative part of the brain because it has no odor, no smell, no color, and no shape. And it's the purest state, just like wisdom and creativity are, has no, no shape. It's like the most original and purest level. What do we do in the morning? We wash our hands. How do we wash our hands? We take the cup in the right hand, give it to the left to wash. Why don't you just take it up with the left? Because we need to do what's called in Hasidut, Mizug Hamidot. Mizug Hamidot means to find a balance. Remember, if you're too extreme to the right, something's going to happen. If you're too extreme to the left, something's going to happen. You know what? Let's use that service and make it a exercise. I'm going to take the right. Give it to the left. The left is going to serve the right. The right is going to serve the left. And like this, I come to a level of balance between chesed, kindness, and severity. By the way, I spoke to a therapist, and he told me that one of the ways used today with ADD, ADHD, PhD, etc., to be able to uh, control the mind is to do what's called a cross-pattern exercise. What's a cross-pattern exercise? I put my left foot with my right hand. I put my right hand with my left foot. I do this, and that exercise of actually find, balances the brain. Incredible. Why do we do it three times? And why with water? We said water is wisdom. Wisdom, we said, is koach ma, the power of what is. Ma, interesting. The word ma'im has two times the word ma inside of it. How do you say ma in Latin? How do you say water in Latin? Aqua. Aqua is in French, qua. What? How do you say water in Yiddish, in German? Wasser, was. What is it? Right? How do you say uh, um, in Arabic the word water? El ma. What? Again, all, all, in all languages, right, the word water is ma because it represents the concept of chokhmah the power of what is, the power of wisdom, of creativity. Why do we do it three times on the hands? Now that we learn how to balance our hands, how to balance our emotions, which by the way, the hands are the extension of the heart, just so you know, and not only the left hand, which God forbid at a moment that a person has a heart attack, there is a weakness in the left hand. I want to tell you, I gave this lecture in Montreal, 
and a cardiologist, which is a, a, a childhood friend, told me that you have to know that even the middle finger, the nerve that goes to the middle finger, feels what happens in the heart at that moment. So both hands are the extension of They're the ones that make us deal with the inter, uh, external world. So we want to be able to control the hands. How do we control? We want to bring mind over matter. How many minds do we have? Right? Some people have a mind of their own. We have three minds, three brains. Chokhmah, Bina, Da'at. How many times do we wash our hands? Three times. For wisdom, understanding, and focus. Afterwards, to seal it up, what do we do? We do the mitzvah of Al Netilat Yadayim. What did you say Netilat Yadayim was before? Raise your hands. The natural way of a person when he walks is that his fingers and his hands point down towards physicality. That's the natural way. We are drawn outside. Our hands are busy outside. They're askaniyot, like we said earlier. They're busy touching different things, getting busy with different things. <laughs> we don't want them to be like this. We want to be able, se'u yedechem kodesh. The verse says, Lift up your hands to the holy and draw down the presence of God. Some people in, uh, have the custom to say this pasuk, this verse, before they wash their hands. Lift up your hands to the Kodesh, which means I do netilat yadayim like this. Al netilat yadayim. Look what happened. You started your day. You didn't start even. This is the first blessing you're going to say. So imagine now that after you wash your hands in the morning, after you got ready, you showered, you're dressed, you're going to open the Siddur, and you're going to start your day with that mindful connection to God. By washing your hands and understanding, you want to bring mind over matter, you want to find balance in your emotions, and afterwards you're going to lift and change the direction in order that the mind should actually dominate the emotions. It's interesting. We will see very soon that uh, Yaakov fought against the angel. And at the moment he fought against the angel, the hi angel hit him in, in the hip. And he got hurt in the sciatic nerve. One of the commentaries says, why didn't he just block? Because the whole exercise was an exercise of mind over matter. He lifted up his hands. Some say that even when the Jewish people went through the sea, it says, Uvnei Israel yotzim beyad rama. The Jewish people went with an upper hand because all of them had their intellect and the holy part of their connection to God and the, the emotions were at the same level. One was not going in one direction, the other. And therefore, when you do that exercise, just lift up your hands and think for a second. I can be a master of my emotions just by connecting to God. Thank you so much. God bless you.